Hi, I'm Cheryl Wilkerson, and today we are broadcasting live from the L. Douglas Wilder Performing Arts Center here on the campus of Norfolk State University. I, of course, am with the Blazing Hot Morning Show on 91.1. Please listen every day. And today we are speaking with Dr. Cassandra Newby Alexander. She, of course, is the Dean of the College of Liberal Arts, also co-founder of the Center for African American Public Policy. Welcome, how are you today? I'm doing wonderful, looking forward to this interview. Why do we need the center? Norfolk State University, for its entire history of 85 years, has been invested in helping to train, educate, and of course send out to the world countless individuals who are primarily African American to make an impact on their communities, wherever they live. Right. But the purpose of this center is to galvanize that power so that it makes a public policy impact, not just an individual impact in the different areas that a person may be, but rather to begin to change the public policy so that African Americans throughout this country are now seeing a different pathway. For example, Often, you never hear about what do African Americans think about different issues. It's always after an election, True. after an event has happened. But what about in the, in the beginning, at the inception point? So that African Americans are not being told what they think or what they should think, but rather they're now being surveyed, they're being examined in a way that is proactive so that they can begin to hear a reflection of their perspectives in the national dialogue. And so as scholars, Norfolk State has, has the opportunity to take our scholarship and begin to put that out there so that policymakers begin to hear the information begin to have that evidence that they need to, just to start changing the way that people think when it comes to health care, when it comes to these food deserts, when it comes to transportation and housing needs. Hampton Roads, for example, is still a very segregated community, and we still have major issues when it comes to housing discrimination. Yes. And so it's that we begin to put these issues in the forefront so that policymakers are aware and are then pushed, prompted, lobbied to change the legal policies that will actually impact the public policies. But do we have policy policymakers on the same page where they recognize that this needs to be a very uh, thought, well thought out campaign? Do they understand that? Do they think they can just go as an individual and affect change? Well, you know, any change that happens in the legislature must be accompanied by group think, by group activity, by group support. One of the things that we have that's really important here at Norfolk State is a legacy of our alumni who serve in the General Assembly. Uh, in fact, one of our alumni, uh, Lamont Bagby, is the head of the State Black Caucus. Mm -hmm. And we have another one, uh, Cliff Hayes, who is on the Appropriations Committee. And that's just a few. And so one of the things we are starting to do is make contact with local officials who are like-minded. They want to see change happen, public policy that positively impacts the African-American community. And we're partnering with them and feeding information to them so that they can begin to introduce legislation into the General Assembly. But then on our side, we will start publishing op-ed pieces and information out there, reports and so forth, that support what they're trying to do on the legislative side. And so what will success look like from the center? How will you know that this has been a successful venture? Well, one of the first things that the center did as it was in its inception is there was a group, there, there was a group of us who were representing the center who went to, uh, made an appointment with the governor's office. And so we met all day, not only with the governor, 
but also many of his cabinet officials. And we laid out specific plans that we believed would not only impact his legacy, but also impact the, the, the shift that was really needed in um, legislation regarding African Americans. So it was our recommendation that the governor create a special commission to look at all of the legislation, all the laws that were still on the books, though they weren't necessarily being enforced, but they were still on the books. Discriminatory laws with discriminatory language throughout. The, the General Assembly that met in the spring mm -hmm. of this year eliminated over 200 uh, codes of Virginia that had discriminatory language in it. And so that's partly how we're measuring our impact. And that, I hope, will be part of what we continue to do, but in an even bigger way, in terms of national shifts. What this center is doing for black and brown people, do other nationalities and ethnicities have to do what the center is doing? You know, People of African descent have always been in a very different place than any other group, and, and that includes Native peoples in this country. Um, and so because people of African descent have been the target of laws from the beginning, the target of discriminatory treatment from the beginning, 1619 and moving forward, because of that, laws of discrimination had been set, had been anchored primarily on African Americans. So the model for how you discriminate, how you exhibit prejudice, how you harm people, the model has been what are we doing to people of African descent. And so you've had people from different countries in Latin America. You've had people from even Africa but as long as they have a different accent, they're seen as different. Because it's not just people of African descent, it's really African Americans. And so to focus attention on African Americans really means that everyone else will also be a beneficiary of these shifts in policies and laws but it's African Americans who are the focal point of redlining. We're the focal point sure. of food deserts. We're the focal That's point it. of transportation decisions that have destroyed our communities, such as Jackson Ward when I-64 was put into play. But it, the, the, the problems continue. So this is just one, these are just a few examples. We're also the target of police harassment. Uh, unequal application of the legal system, uh, unequal application of laws, of all kinds of laws. We're still the target of so much of that, whereas other people have been able to disappear. They've been able, they're accepted in society, but for whatever reason, our society still will not fully accept the rights the civil rights of African Americans, and that's why there's so much legislation that is being put into place now in so many conservative districts that are trying to, uh, in some way, stop yes. African Americans from voting. That's it, and final words on voting, please. Vote, your vote matters. The moment someone tells you your vote doesn't matter, they are trying to pull a flim flam on you. They are trying to take away the one right that you as a citizen of this country is supposed to have. And that is a right you cannot buy or sell. It is such an important right that most of the states, and especially the Commonwealth of Virginia, right after the Civil War, implemented laws to eliminate that right permanently from people who were accused of federal crimes. And of course, the primary ones who were accused of federal crimes, I didn't say guilty, but accused and convicted were African-American men. So vote, vote, and understand that your vote matters. And I know I said that was gonna be the last one, but briefly, last one, I promise. Explain to everyone how it is so very important 
not just the presidential level, but these district attorneys and these commonwealth attorneys, can you explain how much power they have and why it's up to us to vote the correct people in office? You must vote at every single level. Most people don't realize you pay more taxes at the local level than any of the other levels. So who is in office will determine what your neighborhood gets or doesn't get. And they know if most of the people in your neighborhood don't vote. And it does not matter how much protesting you do. The only thing that matters is do you show up on voting day and cast your ballot. That is the one thing that makes a difference. And so when it comes to district attorneys who decide whether to pursue certain cases, they give orders or, or uh, they give directions to these grand juries or any of these other things, it is up to you to make sure that the people who are in office represent your interests, not the interests of people who want to keep you from voting and exercising your civil rights. Thank you so much, Dr. Cassandra Newby Alexander. Thank you so much, Dean. You broke it down, and I hope everybody will heed your words and vote. It was my pleasure.